being and they're like, oh yeah, he does that. He's <laughs> cussing in other languages. Merd. French for shit. Yes. All right. I'll stop teaching his sign language. <laughs> that was the first day of my sign language class in, in college was she just taught us all the sign, the cuss words to get it out of the way. And that was awesome. Yeah. I use it all the time, to be honest. <laughs> when I'm in a meeting and I'm like, I hate the guy. Hey, how you doing? Uh, all right. So where do we want to go next here? Somewhere away from inappropriate uses of sign language. <laughs> or appropriate. Uh, I really want to look at it. Yes? 1C on the breakfast list. Uh, okay, so let me add it. started off as uh, 12 17 times. Is there? I don't have the original, so 12, right? 17 times? Yeah, yeah. Seven, 7 over 8. 7 over 8? Minus 1 over 6. 1 over 6? Yes? Okay. So there's fractions in it, but who cares? Uh, we care a little bit, but math doesn't give a shit. It says order operations doesn't care what's in there. So what do you do first, obviously? Yeah, you could do inside here. Now, technically, you could distribute that, but good Lord, man, don't do that to yourself. You only distribute, really, when the inside of parentheses cannot be done. Like if this is x minus 1 sixth, the only thing you can do is distribute that, right? But if I can put the inside together, yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, so how do you do that? What's this guy need? What's the LCD going to need? 24. 24. So this guy needs 3. Four. 4. So that's where I get the 21 minus 4 over uh, 24. Is that cool? So that's the first thing I have on the answer key. So that's 12 times 17, 17 over 24. That was nice, Jeff. Seven, no, careful, uh, cross the divide, yeah, yeah. So the 17's go away. Right. Did I get that right? Good job, Jeff. Yeah, some of you guys, some of you guys just multiply and then try to reduce. Good Lord, that would suck. Reduce when the numbers are smaller, yeah. Right? You don't have to, but it's a good idea. Can you use the calculator for that one? Just Hell no. Because it'll work out on, say, 45. Of course it will. That's what they're built for, right? <laughs> but again, like I'd like to say, your calculator passes and you stay. You take it again, calculator goes off to the next level. <laughs> right? That's my stupid joke for that, but... Yeah. 16. <laughs> Where? Sorry? 16? 16. Oh, 6. D, okay. Oh, okay, so uh, this, how did it start off here? Let me see. X cubed minus. Plus, is it plus or? All right. So yeah, this is uh, just a factoring problem, really, yeah. right? A couple of factoring problems. Yeah. So what comes out of the top? Yes. X. X. Now I know I did this, but you shouldn't. Uh, write what you get when you do that. Some of you guys try to skip and try to actually do that, but you know, be careful. You can't. Sometimes you make mistakes. Uh, and the bottom is really just. And that's going to be like a hint, right? So how do you factor this guy now? Yeah, x plus 9, bigger one's positive. So what all cancels? Alright, wait, wait, wait. So the x oh. has one x in the Wait, wait, wait. All right, you ready? All right. Uh, eight divided by two is six. Is that right? No. Of course not. 
What did I do? I subtracted. What's 3x minus x? 2x. So that's what you get when you subtract 3x and x. When you divide things, common factors cancel. So that's 3 times x divided by x. So what's the common factor? x. And of course, that's this way, so the 3's on the bottom, but it's the same idea. You can only change coefficients down here, should right? Coefficients change like that when you're adding and subtracting. That's the only time it's going to be like taking x away. It must be subtraction, right? I had three x's and now I have two. No, that's not what happens here because this is division. So division can only kill things that are connected by multiplication, right? So, so this is like you're thinking three x is two x plus x, so then this x cancels. Oh, but that's part of an addition problem. It can't work that way. Uh, I still have one year over. Uh, I don't know what else to say. So, so like 7 over 21, how do you reduce that? Yeah, why? Because 21 is 3 times 7. Isn't that the exact same situation I had? So what happens here? The 7s go away. Okay, here the x's go away. That's, that happens the exact same way. The only way to make 3x become 2x is by subtraction. Not really, but I don't want to suppose on Do you see what I'm saying? At least the way that you're trying to do it here. Division can't make that happen here. Yes? Um, you're saying is that if it was x over 3 minus x, you can't cross it out. That's also true. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. What about the 9? Oh, it's a 9 and a 4. Never mind. Yeah, so this is the end of your result. Yeah. 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 Right. Stop your yourself from not doing Right. Stop yourself from 9 divided by 3 is 3. Because there's no word up there to say that. It says x plus 9 divided by 3, and I can't do shit with that. You guys don't know what to do. I love it. You can ask anything. You can go over anything. Sure. Uh... See if this even has an answer. Uh, I'm curious now if this is going to have an answer. We'll find out. So, I try to make problems for calculators that you can't even do by hand. I mean, this, this is not impossible to do by hand, but it's really damn close. Too impossible to do by hand. Um, all right. So how do we work this? So kind of jump right to it. But but what button did I press to get here? White. That's how I can plug in functions. So do I have a y equals here somewhere? No. So shit, what the hell is that for, Jeff? I don't know. All right. uh, this is one function, right? So I can let y1 do this, and I can let y2 do this, and then I'm looking for, of course, where they intersect, because that'll be where they're equal. So those would be the answers to this equation. And the y is a letter I introduced just so I can look at the graphs. The Y has nothing to do with the answer here because it's not even part of the question. Maybe, maybe. So, how do I have to be careful about that first side for the little equation? Good. 
So you got to tell it. There's only one thing on the top, so you really don't need parentheses around one thing. But you got to put parentheses around the two terms down on the bottom. So that's one side. Oh, sorry. I'm good. Uh, all right, two things. We haven't got to the cube area, don't worry. So here's x, right? Here's the x button. x divided by parentheses x squared. Right there is your squared button. Plus 6. Now, I don't know who remembers what the cube root was. We saw it yesterday. Nope. That's your square root. I need a cube root. Math number four. And the five is your, I call this the fruit button. So if you put seven and then you hit this button, it would be seven fruit. I am fruit. No, no, no. Okay. Some of you? Okay, good. Cube root of. 11 minus x. If you have the newer version, you don't need the parentheses. I didn't put the parentheses in there. The stupid calculator did it for me. It's like Microsoft Word, trying to figure out what I want. Let me stop it. But if you have the newer one, the, I think the, 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 the radicals should just grow, right? Okay. okay. So you can really see well what's in there. So now I've got one side of the equation in there for y1, and the other side on y2. So if I graph those with this expensive freaking graphing calculator, be able to better be able to do this in its sleep. Uh, hit graph, let's see what happens. My window might be freaky, so if I hit graph, I'll probably get something really weird. Look at that. Well, okay, that's weird. So what did I skip there? What's the, what do I do? Anytime I put a new function in, I should hit zoom six for standard window. It, this standard window might not be good enough, but this is a good place to start. Oh my gosh. I got an error. Yeah, that's what I got. You got an error? No. Like when you put it in a Oh, yeah, yeah, because I, I don't see any answers here, right? Mm -hmm. But where does it look like maybe there is an answer? This, this is really small. You see how this is going down, down, down? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's an answer out here. All right, so let me, let me, this is good. I like this problem that I've made. It's a disgusting problem, but oh well. Do you see how that one equation is really tight? The outputs are really small. And you can imagine, if I make x, 3, 4, isn't this 4 divided by big ass numbers, isn't that going to be small? Okay, so there's answers out here that are just so close to the x-axis, it can't even show them to me. Really close. And look, what is this guy doing? Go down, and maybe it hits over here. So what's this? What's the highest up I can see right now? Who remembers? What's, what's that? That's an x value of 10. So what do I want to make? I want to be seeing x value of maybe up to what? Up to maybe 20. Can you say I love it? So I want to make my maximum x 20. So hit the, I want to control this window. So I probably hit the button that says window. Sorry, I can be a dork sometimes. Hit the window button. And I want to make x max 20, like you said, right? 20, there you go, Jeff. Now at the same time, that stupid, uh, this equation was just so tight. Let me, my, I'm seeing too far on the y. I don't want to see all the way up to 10 and negative 10. Shit, all my answers for that one are like really close to zero. Let me negative one and one for y. I don't want to see all the way up to negative 10 and 10. Let's make this negative one to one and kind of give it more room to breathe. Let's see what that does. Negative one to so one. So I can control the x values that it shows me and the y values that it shows me. So I can kind of zoom in. It's like zoom box, just more specific. Now let's see what happens when I graph this. Look at that. That's the one that was so tight I couldn't even see it. Come on. There you are. Oh, look at that. That's funky. Ooh, did I make something that has no answer? I probably did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> it skips over. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right. So weirdness happens, but it looks like the answer should be right in here, right? Now again, again, what did I use the other day when there was like weird shit happening in this like right there, zoom box? Right. Oh, this problem, I love this problem. It's got everything in it. So I use zoom box. Remember how this works? 
I move the cursor to the corner of a box, and then I move down and over, and I can open a box. So I can zoom in on what's happening. So that's how zoom box works. You guys, how do you get See that, sorry. So you have to hit, uh, so when you first do zoom box, it's probably gonna open up over here somewhere for you. Move the cursor to one corner of a box, and then we hit down and over, it opens the box up. So when you get to a corner, you hit enter. Now when I got my box open around what I want to see better, I hit enter. And it zooms in on that part. Let's see what let's see what happens. Here. I never got bigger. <laughs> there we go, sweet. That works okay. There. Enter. Now I hit down and open. So you got it's like pinning it. Oh, it's yeah. pinning that side. You go a little more down. Alright, cool. Enter. Uh, how are you guys doing? Are you guys still playing with me or no? You guys are like, I gave up in like three seconds. <laughs> this is good stuff, man. Is that where we're the answer, the x equals and the y? No, not yet. I mean, do you see how, I mean, I haven't even started looking for the intersect yet. That's just where the cursor's sitting. You see that's just where the cursor's sitting. So I can kind of estimate my answer. Looks like the answer is going to be about 10.9795, right? That's probably not the exact answer. So, of course, how do I find the exact answer? So, so everything I just did with the window and the zooming and all that stuff was just so I can see my intersections better. That's all. I moved my window over so I can see where, because it looked like it was coming down. And I was like, I can't just, I uh, just got to see a little further over. And then I'm like, weird shit. Let me zoom in on that weird shit. There, now I can see my intersection better. And now I just apply the process, which is what? Where do I go to get the intersection? Calculate. Good. I hit second. Trace to get to calculate. Five. And remember, we, I went through all the steps, but it's just put the thing on the answer and hit enter. Enter. Well, the whole thing went too far away. What are you doing, you crazy? All right, enter. There. Ten point nine. Almost eleven. Oh, you know, it's almost eleven. Yeah. Sorry. Neato. Maybe just me. Okay. Think the X, right? Yeah, exactly. Remember the Y has meaning in this two-dimensional world, but this is a one-dimensional problem, so it doesn't have anything to do with the problem. So what will be the answer? 10.9? Yes, exactly. Now, now, how's the Y fit into it? Well, 10.9 makes this equation true, and the 0.086 is what they happen to both be. So the numbers you want to see will be the x equals and y equals, or just x? The answer to this equation is the x value, because that's all this equation has in it. But what's the y value mean? It's what the values of these would be. They're equal, and they would both be 0.0866. Yeah. Does that make sense? So real quick, watch, 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 watch. Stay with me now. Watch, you ready? x plus 3 equals 2x minus 1. How do I solve that? Yeah, minus x, minus x, plus 1, plus 1, you get 4 equals x, right? So 4 is what the answer is, but what is this when x is 4? What is that when x is 4? 7. Right? When x is 4, isn't that 7? And what's this when x is 4? Of course they're the same because it's that's what's going on here. That's the answer. And what do the sides become? They both become 7. So this is the answer. What do both sides become? They become this. Do I care about this? No. I just want to know what makes this true. Me. Are we going to have to like blow out some answer? Depends on what I give you. Are you going to need a graph too or just numbers? Say again? Are you going to need a graph too or just No, just the numbers, yeah. Yeah, you just got to do it correctly in your graphing calculator. There's not going to be a lot of work to show. Is it going to be a more obvious problem? <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. Now again, I, I really want you, so whenever I'm doing an example of a problem, what's important is to realize why I do what I do. I don't just do what I do because I, I know what to do. Uh, I don't know what to expect when I made this problem. I really didn't. I don't know if you guys gave me so much credit that I like knew the answer ahead of time. I had no freaking clue if it even had an answer. I just wrote some shit down that looked neat to me. But do you guys see why I did the first thing I did? The, the only possible answer has to be over here. Now, I will give you this. 
The one thing I won't let happen is I won't give you something that's like, this is a little weird. But do you guys understand what to think? When I, when I see this, the answers are so small, it can't really show them all to me. So yeah. the whole window thing was just to move your screen? Yeah, exactly. Because right now I can only see up to 10. So I'm going to make X max 20, and then I should be able to see where that hits. Just because you saw it going down, so you knew it across. Exactly. So the thing I would make more obvious is I make this function you know, bigger, so it's not so weird. But, like it looks like it stops here. Yeah. But the numbers just get so small, they get really, really close to the X axis. That's weird. I won't let that happen. <laughs> but I certainly could have the answer show up off the screen. You just have to move the screen. That's all. Yes? All the steps that you did is on uh, how to work your test. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. It's been a while since I made that. Let me see. They're great, tell me. Graphing basics, changing the window. Yeah, this is changing the window. Finding the intersection of two functions. And then we got something in our future, the minimax. Something I haven't showed you yet is the table. Do you see this table button? Yeah. So if you hit second graph, well, right now it's set really weird, but uh, don't look at this. All right, normally it starts up like that. So see how it's making x, y tables, but it made two of the y's because I have two functions in there, right? Maybe. So this is like a really quick way to make an x, y table. You can have the calculator do it for you. Sweet. I love it. The book should have references to TI stuff in it. I like it. But my calculator guide is a good thing to have. Oh, real quick. Uh, sorry. Where do you think absolute value is? Probably under the all-purpose math button. Right? If you hit math, go to num, absolute value is right there. So if I want to graph the absolute value of x, where, where, how do you think it looks? Uh, don't, don't do it yet. Absolute value of 1 is? One. The absolute value of negative one is one. So it should look like that. Because on the positive side, all the outputs are positive. On the negative side, all the outputs are positive. So it should look like a V. And you know that x squared looks like what? No, you don't know this? Do you know x squared looks like a, what's the word? Parabola. Yeah, parabola. I like it. Parabola. It looks like one bowl. What's parabola? No. So the, the absolute value turns for the same reason. What can it x squared? When I square something, it can't go negative. So it can't go negative, so it turns. Absolute value can't go negative, so what's it do? Turns. So if you graph this, zoom six, there's your big ass V, right? Absolute value of one is one. Absolute value of two is two. Absolute value of negative one is one. Absolute value of negative two is two. Bam. All right. And the cow crowd goes, meh. <laughs> I feel so much better than I know that, John. But that's something, I mean, when I first started using this, nobody told me where the absolute value, I didn't even know it could do absolute value. So, yeah, I told you, there, yeah. So you can actually do stuff like this. You know, absolute value of seven minus nine. So you can put a whole like string of things in there that can work it out for you. This is why you must show me work on stuff like order operations problems. Don't just go, well, I could just look at it and tell it was no, screw that. Show me, show me the work. Mr. Head Math. Show me too. Alright. I know some of you guys could probably do a lot of math in your head. As a teacher, I find it difficult to grade that. <laughs> so you must show me something. Seven six forty nine. Oh, uh, I think we actually did that exact problem. Um, and you're like, well, obviously, I didn't see that, dude. Uh,
this kind of problem, what is it that I want to have happen? The specific problem doesn't even matter, really. What's the idea? Yeah, you want LCD. You want Tom to Tom to Right. So what's this guy need? He needs a five. And a Y. Because he doesn't have a Y yet. I know some of you guys still think I'm insane. Jeff, right there. But this has a Y minus one. So it still needs a Y. So what did I just give it? I gave it a five and a Y, top and bottom. What's this guy need? Good, y minus one, and a five. And this guy needs? Y minus one. Cool, yeah, this does feel familiar. Right? right, and now, because it's an equation, only because it's an equation, I can multiply both sides by this, and it cancels. And now it looks a lot better, I have Y, Y, Y minus 5, so now you just move everything over that way, blah, 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 get it equal to 0 because of the squared, right? Does that sound familiar? Okay, cool. What could Y not be at the end? If you get this, you got to throw it out. What? Two answers. What can Y not be? If you get it, you got to throw it out. One or zero. or zero, exactly. If y is zero, then y is zero. So then that can't happen. Maybe. So you shouldn't get that. But you get two answers that are both good. But there are several problems in that homework that you had to throw out at least one of the answers, if not both, because they would make the bottom zero. Hopefully tomorrow they'll take a break. Just go tell them, hey guys, take take tomorrow off. You've been working so hard. Yeah. It's hot. Show you the don't hug me, I'm scared video. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever heard of that? Don't hug me, I'm scared? No. Alright. I'll see if anybody looks that up. So. <laughs> Show you the proof that 13 times 7 is 28. That's a good Abbott and Costello thing. It shows some Evan Costello, you guys ever heard of Evan Costello? Who's on first? There you go. I don't know. Third base. No. Who's on first now? It's not from my childhood, by the way. That's, it's from way long ago, but it's amazing how well film holds up. You can still see stuff from like the 80s and stuff. This, of course, is from the 30s, 40s, 50s. Wait, can you do like an online movie? Sure. It's, um... 742 number 17, I think it's a word problem. Uh oh. Do you have it written down? Yeah. 742. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, so the problem with the online homework, if I assign like number 78 and it's the 17th problem I assign, it calls it number 17. So I don't know. So I'll do a word problem. Well, there's no real word problems in 7-2. There's problems like uh, this one that gave you the stopping distance for a car. Yeah. And part A said simplify this. So what can you do to simplify this? How do you simplify this? Multiply. Oh. Yeah, multiply is one thing, but you can also at the same time. Yeah. Reduce. Three goes into 90. 